Howdy folks and welcome back to Pool School. If you own a saltwater pool, you are absolutely gonna to wanna to watch this video because in this video, I'm gonna show you the newest digital salt tester that I've found for my pool that is not only easy to use, it's really affordable. So what do you say we get to it? Alrighty folks, before we get started, I wanna thank you once again for watching this video. Remind you to like this video if you do by clicking that thumbs up icon below this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already, and please share my channel with everyone you know who owns a pool. Also, don't forget to check out my new website. Well, it's not that new anymore, it's about a year or two old. But check out my website, poolschooler.com again poolschooler.com for more exclusive members only content that will help you save even more money servicing your pool yourself if any of you have been following my youtube channel since it started back the first year i started the, the channel i think i did a video on a digital salt tester that actually was given to me by one of the first guys i ever worked for and it actually was pretty cool because well first of all it's pretty expensive i think that now they retail for about 120 to 150 dollars but at the time it was the only thing that i had seen besides the strips of the salt strips which I've already commented I'm not a fan of those because they're confusing and they're hard to read um, but that was kind of what was out on the market and uh, I always found that this this old tester which you can still watch a video on I'm actually going to eventually take it off because I like this new tester better but that old tester was a little hard to use it was hard to read because you had to know how to move de decimal points and stuff and I try to like things you know me the easier the better so um, I did come across a new digital salinity tester that tests other things as well but I only use it for salinity and um, it runs $39.99 I'll put a link actually to that actual product that you can get one if you want to uh, in the description below this video so you can check that out as well but like I said it's under $40 super easy to use and um, I just found that ease of use and and reliability and price are critical when it comes to servicing your old pool. So let's take a look at the unit. So this is the unit. I can't even pronounce the name of the company that makes it. It's Orops, Orop, Oropsy. It's a salt level tester. And I'll, I'll show you what's inside the box in a few seconds here. But this is the box that it comes in. It's a water quality tester. Now this thing also will test total dissolved solids, but please watch my video on total dissolved solids and why I think that they're not a good measuring uh, test for when you need to change your water out. But re watch my video on total dissolved solids. I'll put a link to that video in the description below this video as well. And you can take a look and see what you think, all right? But again, I don't wanna over explain things. This is the unit, the box it comes in, like I said, under $40. And um, let's take a look at what's inside. Okay, so this is the unit. When it comes in a box, this is what you get inside. It's the box. And then you've got a little insert where the, where the unit sits in. And this unit actually comes with its own batteries installed. But inside of that, when you unscrew this top, that's where the batteries are stored. You unscrew that. And then you, there's a little plastic tab you have to pull to allow the batteries that are in there to make contact with the unit. So that way, while it was being shipped and all that and being sitting on, the, on their shelf, it wasn't wearing the batteries out. So very typical of a lot of different um, electronics that come with their batteries equipped in them. Again, you just pull the little tab out, screw it back in, and you're ready to go. Also comes with a manual. Very simple to understand. I'm not going to, there's nothing really as far as setting it up. It's very simple to do. Uh, so again, I'll refer you to that. And again, I'm just going to show you how easy this thing is to use. And it comes with an extra set of batteries too. Okay, so that will last you quite some time. Uh, make note of the batteries so that if you do ever have to replace them or buy some, you can actually get the right ones. Okay, so this is the unit. It's very simple to use. Comes like this. And again, I've already taken the tab out. I've used this for a while. It's got a power button, and then it's got a couple other buttons. This is a hold button, and another one. Don't worry about all that. Again, how simple it is. Push the power button, it turns on. Top number, the zero. That's the salinity. The bottom number, 77.7 .7 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the current temperature that it is out here. Um, it's actually a little warmer than that. But um, the only thing that you really need to worry about adjusting is if you wanna use Celsius, there's a way to adjust this to be uh, a Celsius uh, temperature as opposed to Fahrenheit. But since we're in America and I'm in Arizona, I use Fahrenheit and I don't even use that. I really wanna be able to just test the salinity. And then again, powering it off, just push the power button, it shuts it off, okay? Um, there are other things that this thing tests, including total dissolved solids, but I'm not a fan of testing total dissolved solids. One of the reasons is, uh, if you haven't seen my video on it, um, for a typical saltwater pool, your total dissolved solids, which includes the salt, 
is between 32 and 3400 parts per million. Well, if you look at the total dissolved solids um, readings on a test strip, it'll say that if you're that high, you need to replace your water, and that's not the case with the salt pool. So I don't use total dissolved solids of, as a measuring stick as to how often or when to, to dissolve or to change the water in your pool. If you haven't seen my video on total dissolved solids, I'll put a link to that in the description below this video so you can watch it and see what I'm talking about. Anyway, let's go to a pool and see how easy this unit is to use. Okay, so one thing I wanna show you about this, 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 this unit is, obviously to turn it on, you just push the on button. And you notice how at the top there, it says salt. And then below the zero, it says PPM, that's parts per million. And then it's also rated at Fahrenheit. It's, it's testing, it's basically the air temperature in Fahrenheit as opposed to Celsius, like I said earlier. But again, I don't do use a lot of these buttons, but, and also this unit doesn't, it comes calibrated, so you don't really need to recalibrate it. But there is a operation guide. In the operation guide, there talks about calibrating the salinity. Um, if you take good care of this unit, you probably don't have to do that. Um, and honestly, um, it can be a little tricky because you have to have uh, a, what do you call it, a test salinity thing that is uh, exact so you know what you're testing against. Anyway, so the thing that I do want to show you is the mode and the calibration button. The hold, temp hold button is really interesting. That also, if I push that again, okay, if I hold it, it changes to Celsius. See how that changes Celsius? I want to go back to Fahrenheit because I do Fahrenheit. So that's how you change that. Now again, I'll show you also how that hold button works when you're testing a salinity. But I want to show you the mode. You notice right now it's set to salt, notice the top, and then PPM. If I push this button here on the mode once, it switches to salt, but it switches to percentage. That's if you have a higher percentage, like you have a, like a saltwater fish tank and you need much more uh, than 10,000 parts per million. Um, to be registered to be tested then you go to percentage but again like I said if I t push that button again then it goes to this other one us slash cm you see that on the left side in the top there I don't know really what that's for I don't even use it but what I want to do is push that mode button now notice I pushed it again it's zero it says ppm but it doesn't say what it is on top I want to push that mode button till I see the word salt up there on the top and then I see ppm underneath the zero and that means my unit is ready to go. So I'm gonna turn it off by pushing the power button. Now we can go check out a pool and see what it looks like. Okay, I'm at one of my client's pools that has a salt system. They happen to have a pool pilot and it's set at 100% right now. Um, I've already tested the, water, the, the salinity of this pool before, so I kind of know what to expect. But again, typically in most pools, uh, salt systems and check your owner's manual for your specific specific system They usually recommend between 32 and 3400 parts per million on the salinity Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna remove the, the cap bottom cap I'm gonna do this with one hand Okay, take that cap off like that. It reveals the electrodes see them right there Those little metal electrodes inside that unit. Okay, I'm gonna push the button the power button It turns on make sure that it's at salt and it's reading Fahrenheit and parts per million salt. So I'm just gonna stick this in the water, okay? And I'm just gonna leave it there, just the end of it for a, for a little bit. And you'll notice reading, it's starting to go up 2600. I don't know if you can see that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda let it sit for a little bit. And you just let it sit there a little bit and it'll start to go up and eventually it'll start to stop going up. Right now it's 2660. It might go up to 2670. I typically say as a general rule of thumb, um, that if it goes up to, if it stops moving up the scale after about every, you know, 10, 15 seconds, then you're about good. But you notice it's not moving much now, it's 2680. So I'm gonna push the button, this arrow right here, the top arrow, it says hold or temperature. Now that holds the temperature, uh, that holds the, the reading where it was, and I've got 2681 parts per million, which is about right. If I push this again, it'll go back to zero, and then I power it off. And that's really all I do. Now, if you want to keep this clean, you can take some distilled water and rinse that electrode off and then use a soft, cl soft cloth, like a Q-tip or something, to dry it. But honestly, um, it's not that big a deal to keep clean. If they get really corroded over, you can use a very uh, diluted solution of white vinegar and water, distilled water, to kind of clean those electrodes off with a Q-tip and dip that in there and it'll kind of clean it off and then rinse it off with distilled water. That's pretty much how you read it. And I know that that's about where my client's 
salinity is on this pool and they know that they need to add some salt so we're going to add some salt to that um, probably next week and get it up to snuff. Again, as far as adding the amount of salt and how much salt do you need for your particular saltwater pool, I'm gonna put a link to two different salt calculators that allow you to enter the gallons of your pool, the current salinity level, and the salinity level you want it to become at, and then it'll tell you how many pounds of pool salt you need to put in the pool. And I'll put a link to both of those calculators in the description below this video. So there you have it, my friends. That is my video on my new favorite digital salinity tester made by Oropsy. And again, I really like it because it's cheap, under 40 bucks. And again, there'll be a link to get one of these if you want to for your pool in the description below this video. And it's also very easy to use, as you can see. So I hope this helps. I hope this video made sense. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the comment section below this video. Or as always, you can email me directly. My email address will come across the bottom of the screen. It is, as always, Kenny poolschool at gmail.com. Once again, Kenny poolschool at gmail.com. I want to thank you again for watching. I remind you to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to check out my membership website, poolschooler.com. Until we meet again, remember to have fun, be safe, and always watch those kids and elderly folk and pets around water. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.